Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be thinking about sampling. So, so far we've talked about our questionnaire or survey and multi-item scales. So we've talked about how we go about collecting the data. We've talked about different kinds of statistical analysis and making recommendations, what we do with the data. And we've talked about uh, research questions, so kind of planning out our problem. So really this is our final gap and it's how we go about selecting the people who are actually going to do our particularly survey, um, I guess interviews and focus groups, we might go about selecting people as well, but in particular uh, when we are uh, making our sample selection. So if you recall uh, our definitions from our very first week, uh, we had definitions for population and for sample. So the population was all of the people or all of uh, whatever it is that I was interested in. And most of the time I'm going to uh, collect some sort of subset or some sample. Every so often I might be able to collect all the data about everyone. And the name for this is a census. So a census is where we collect all the data for everyone. Uh, most of the time though we will collect a sample instead. So the most common example of the census is the one that the ABS, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, collects every five years. Uh, and so it collects demographic information about uh, everyone, or ideally everyone in Australia. Uh, every so often you might have uh, an example, say you wanted to collect information about all the people in a particular company. It might be a fairly closed population, so you might be able to do a census and collect data from all of them. But a lot of the time, it's just going to be too difficult. If you're trying to generalise to all the teenagers in Australia or all the people in Melbourne or any big population, you won't be able to collect data from all of them. So this table gives a bit of a contrast of samples and censuses. So censuses are obviously uh, more expensive and they take longer. Uh, they work best if it's a small population. So like I said before, if it was just all the people in a single company, you might actually be able to collect that. Uh, so if it's costly to collect our data as well, um, then being able to just take the sample is going to be better. So our process for our sample, we will start off by defining our target population. So who do we want to find out information about? And then we will determine what our, we call our sampling frame. And that's the, the people or the units that we actually draw our sample from. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. We choose a sampling technique to choose our particular uh, sample. We work out our sample size and then we actually go about our data collection. So when we're defining our target population, we want to be specific. So if we're talking about athletes, is it only professional athletes? Do we ignore amateur athletes? Who is it that we want to find out information about? It should be very clearly defined. It's going to be important for when we do our uh, questionnaire and our surveying that we are able to have good screening questions and eliminate the people that we're not interested in. Another term that's important is the element. So the element is the commonly person, but not necessarily person, that we actually want to find information about. So it's going to be our respondent. Uh, so it could be the main grocery borrower, the decision maker, or male or female. Could if if our um, if we're interested in all the people in Australia, it could just be any Australian resident or citizen or uh, person who's currently in Australia. So the element is the person or the item that we're finding out information about. And normally it's a person. So the sampling unit is what we are actually going to be randomly selecting using our sampling method. So sometimes the sampling unit is also the person. So we are randomly choosing people. But other times, our random selection might be households, or businesses, or schools, or streets, or census area units, or 
uh, phone numbers. So the thing that we're actually randomly choosing may not actually be the person. It will contain the person. So if we are randomly selecting schools, inside the schools are the students who are the people who we want to survey, but our sampling unit that we're randomly selecting may be schools. Uh, if we're doing any kind of mall intercept or personal interviews, uh, these are, are cases where the, our selection is the person. So the element, uh, which is what we want to find out information about, is the person and the sampling unit. We spot the person, we go over to them, we choose them, is also the sampling unit. Uh, so we need to make sure we define any geographic boundaries, any other demographic criteria. Uh, sometimes there might be some sort of time period that we're interested in. Maybe we're only interested in people who've lived in Australia for less than two years. So there could be other, other criteria uh, around our population and therefore around who we choose in our sample. So our sampling frame is all of the people from whom we draw our sample. Ideally, this is the same as our target population, but most of the time it is not. You could imagine my target population might be all of the people in Australia. But if I do a telephone survey, then my sampling frame, the people that I can draw my sample from, are all the people in Australia who have a telephone. So if I uh, I'm not going to be able to sample people who do not have telephones and there's maybe a very small chance that I might uh, ring an Australian number and maybe it somehow redirects overseas uh, so I may end up very small chance of selecting someone who is not part of my target population because they're not part of the Australian population uh, by using telephone surveying uh, and there's a certainly much larger chance of accidentally eliminating people who are part of my target population because they don't have a telephone. We do need to consider that no matter how we go about selecting our sample uh, there will almost always be some sort of mismatch. So we would be very lucky to be able to have a target population who perfectly matches our sample frame. But we should remember a sample frame is the all of the people or the sampling units uh, that we can possibly draw our sample from. So it could be a telephone book, it could be an association directory. If I want to survey doctors, I can go to medical association, um, try and get, get to them that way. Um, there's various different mailing lists that you can purchase, uh, different firms. Uh, create and compile mailing lists. Um, you have groups that have members. Uh, you may be using Google Maps, you might be using other kind of city directories or city maps as ways of determining where you're going to draw your sample. You may be doing random digit dialing. Uh, you need to be a little bit careful with that with regards to the no call list. You might be using email. You might be using other third-party web lists. Uh, you might be using uh, providers like Valued Opinions who have databases of people. If I used Valued Opinions for instance, my sampling frame would be all of the members of Valued Opinions. Anyone who's not a member of uh, that particular surveying group uh, is not able to be part of my sample because they can't get selected. So I do need to be careful and keep this in mind because I want to try and minimize that difference. If I was surveying the elderly, it probably wouldn't make much sense to use email or to use a web survey. Uh, whereas if I was wanting to survey, say, 18 to 25 year olds, then maybe having an app or something on a smartphone or email or web would be more appropriate. There'd still be some people that I don't manage to get hold of because they don't have a smartphone or they um, well, they don't have internet, uh, but it would be much smaller for younger people than it would be for older people. So that's our sampling frame error, where our population and our sampling frame don't quite match up. So we want to try and 
um, reduce this as much as possible. Uh, we can have screening questions um, for things like demographics, product usage. If I only want to survey people who own an iPad, then I can ask in my, in my survey, question one, do you own an iPad? And so that way I can eliminate them straight away. After the fact, uh, I can get a statistician to maybe do a little bit of work with the estimates as well. So if there's people who I think are more or less likely to have ended up in my survey than they appear in the general population, then I might be able to have the statistician re-weight re my results to make them more representative of the whole population rather than just the people I was able to access in my sampling frame. Another consideration is our sample size. Uh, so there's quantitative and qualitative factors that relate to this. Uh, we wouldn't, will not be doing sample size calculations, but I think it's important to know what kind of factors we should consider. Uh, the first is our resources. How much time do we have? How much money do we have to be able to do our study? Generally, the bigger the sample size is, the better. Uh, but how many people can we actually afford to survey? How much time do we have? Um, we should think about completion rates as well. So if I need a thousand people to complete my survey, but only 50% of people who I ask will do it, then in fact I need to approach 2,000 people to get a thousand to complete the survey. Uh, I can look at other similar studies, see what sample sizes they used. Um, that can give me a little bit of an indication, but should be careful um, to still cover all the rest of my bases because they may have got it wrong. They may have used the wrong sample size. There's also quantitative factors. So we would probably uh, seek out some assistance with this, but we have particular calculations that we can do uh, which relate to the width of our confidence intervals that we would like in our results. And in particular, we also have this thing called power. And so you may see uh, reference to power calculations every so often. And so a power calculation, the power of a test, is the ability for it to detect a significant difference. And so we can nominate a particular power, and from that we can calculate how many people we should have in our sample in order to be able to find these significant differences that we're looking for, if they happen to exist. So once we've figured out how many people, uh, we've figured out what mode, so what, what's our sampling frame, and are we going to use telephone or web or face to face, how are we going to go about finding people, uh, then we're pretty much ready to actually execute the sampling process. Uh, we should figure out uh, some guidelines for things, for instance, if we're going door to door, we randomly select a house, the person's not home, do we recontact them? If we do, how many times? Do we maybe give them one chance or two chances, go back at different times or different days um, in order for them to be part of our sample? This has been a Swinburne production.